So good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here. Today we have our sister Esther Escobedo, uh, Roquera for Christ. Hi, Esther, how are you? Good, good, thank you for having me. We're excited to have you here. Um, you know, I, I have a few things I wanted to talk to you about. I remember um, you had mentioned that um, you, you went through a hard season and that's today what I want to you know bring up is when we go into a grieving process you know what happens what do we do um, what's going on every single person is different I know with Esther um, your father passed away and um, l let's talk about that when your father um, passed away you went through a grieving process. They say that there's five stages of grief. There's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Um, how do you relate to all of that? Well, uh, it's just, it's hard to listen, especially like someone that you're very close to. Um, I was so close to my dad. And it's just a process. I think it's just a process and that you go through, um, it's difficult, it's not easy, uh, but uh, with, with God, everything is it's more easy, and you see it differently, and it's just, I think it's just one of those things that we have to go through uh, mm -hmm. in order for us to share also with someone else that is going through the same thing, Yeah. and yeah, it's just, um, it's, it's just it, it's hard yes. you know it's hard but at the, same time, at the same time you know God could help you to overcome and to have peace in this moment amen and um, so what I'm hearing right now also as we're speaking is that during that time God's love um, you know during this process this time he really takes over when we allow him to and I know that earlier before we came on, we were talking for a few minutes and there was something that um, Esther mentioned to me um, that was very beautiful. It's regarding the silence. Um, go ahead and, and, and share that with, with the listeners. Yeah, most definitely. So um, I have I have experienced that to be in silence. And it's hard for me to say that because I'm always talking. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I learned that, that that's part of the uh, uh, the process that that I was going through, and and uh, just staying in silence, meditating, and just absorbing everything that that I was going through, you know, and the pain, but also the blessing of having uh, such a wonderful dad. Mm -hmm. It's just a, an amazing experience, and just understanding the silence. Um, you know, um, I saw it as as um, something very important, and it just reminded me of Jesus. You know, when when he went with the disciples, but he went by himself to pray mm -hmm. to God, and he just you know that of just him being just with God, you know, and yeah. praying to it just um you know like. It, to me, it was like, you need to do that, you know? You need to stay in silence and just pray to God how you're feeling and what you're going through and how how are you going to learn yeah. from this, you know? Yeah. And so I learned that and I even wrote something like a poem about silence that, that, uh, that uh, you know, like it helps you. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want to go back to what you mentioned regarding Jesus when he went, he stepped aside and he had to go pray by himself. Even Jesus needed his own time alone. And I remember the Bible, it says that even when Lazarus um, was dead, Jesus yeah. cried. Yeah, most definitely. So if Jesus had to have some, some time alone, you know, then I feel like we should also take that time to discern and, and, and be alone in in not not forever right i mean just for a little yeah. season to see where god is taking us what is god telling us there's like i mentioned earlier um before we came on that there's beauty in the pain when something happens i know um it's hard to see it now but later on it, it and i think you mentioned that too that it's hard to see it when you're in the process of it to yeah. see the beauty but it is there and 
Now, um, I remember you mentioning the the poem or, or something that you wrote. Not it was a uh, something you wrote in, um, and can you share that with us too? Yeah, definitely. It's just it's in Spanish, okay? Okay. But it, but it's called silence. Okay. Uh, se titula silencio. Dice el silencio puede ayudar cuando estás triste. Es otra forma de lidiar con tus sentimientos. A veces y solo pocas veces me he dado cuenta que no tengo ganas de platicar. Solo quiero pensar y recordar. Quisiera que el tiempo se detuviera por instantes, pero para tener más momentos contigo. El silencio ayuda para reflexionar y meditar, o quizás en poner nuevas metas o logros que quieres hacer. Sí, el silencio puede ser bueno cuando es usado correctamente con un propósito. Jesús a veces quería estar solo y orar a su padre. Hoy aprendí algo muy importante, que estar en silencio es necesario para crecer y madurar. Mm, that's beautiful, Esther. Um, do you mind, um, you know, sharing that in English, maybe, like, just paraphrasing it, I know, uh, or, you know, just a little translation so people can also understand in English what that yeah. meant to you? Thank you. Uh, I'll try my best. So this one uh, is titled The Silence. Mm -hmm. So the silence could help you when you're sad. Mm -hmm. And then it says, um, it's another form of like leading with your feelings, right? right. And sometimes um, I have noticed that I didn't want to talk, that I just wanted to think and to remember. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stop the time, for instance, so that I could be more moments with you. Um, the science, it helps you to reflect and to meditate or also to think about new goals or things that you want to do. Uh, science could be good when it's used correctly and with a purpose. Uh, Jesus, sometimes he wanted to be by himself and pray to the Father. Today I learned the most important thing, the science is necessary to grow and to mature. That's beautiful. That's very beautiful. Very well said and translated. You know, um, before we came on the show, um, I felt God's spirit put in my heart. And you know how God sometimes just drops in. You know, he's always, you know, dropping in things, but he'll just drop a few words. And I heard him um, in my spirit speak, say, um, God is always speaking. God is always speaking. And he wanted me to share that. And this... God is always speaking goes exactly with what you just mentioned because when God wants us to be silent and just meditate and just yeah. cope with what's going on, we need our, our, he knows because he created us. So he knows that um, we, we have to go through a process where mentally, we're like computers, right? Our brain are like computers. Yeah. So mentally, we're gonna shut down if we don't just, you know, relax, meditate. And through that season, you mentioned that we mature. And we will mature also when God is always, when he speaks to us. And we yeah. listen. We're being obedient. And so I love I love what you wrote. That's very beautiful. Thank you. Um, and also, let's see, I... I, I know that God is still in control and um, oh, talk to me about that. You had mentioned also that um, when God is in control, um, there's there's a purpose. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes it's hard for us to understand what we're going through. Mm -hmm. So the pain that we're going through and sometimes we want answers, you know, and we're looking for things like to why this happened to us or why am I going through and other, other stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes, like, what I learned, you know, that God is still in control of the situation. Yes. So why should we worry, you know? Right. If control, and, and everything happens with a purpose. Right. And, and it's just for us to just understand and to believe in God that, that He has a purpose for our lives. And that there's a meaning that why are we going through this? And, and like I said um, before, like sometimes we're not gonna understand, you know, why we had to go through this. Mm -hmm. But um, 
to me what I'm learning what I'm learning right now is just sometimes we have to go through things like this so that when someone else go through this we could tell them hey with, with Jesus you could overcome um, God could give you peace or God could help you mm-hmm. in this situation and I think it has more meaning because you went through this you know it's not yeah. just something you read or right. that you know is you went through this and so you know that feeling but you also know that God could give you peace and comfort mm-hmm. and he could use you through yeah. this you know definitely and and you know ah, that's powerful those are, <laughs> those are some powerful words yes because um you took the words out of my mouth because it's true that that's what god has been showing me that um through this season you know in other words if we don't go through painful situations how are we going to minister to other women yeah we can't yeah right what if i went to college what if we we went to college me and you right and we have psychology background you know the degrees everything but we can't relate to the person how are we going to help them out how are we going to feel their pain we can't so that's powerful um i have something i want to i want to talk a little bit about job i I love reading about job because when when we look to job um chapter 30 um verse 1 all the way to i mean uh it just keeps going and going and going and going um he's just talking about how how painful his situation is he's in a storm he feels that god is not listening to him um he feels mocked um you know there's he feels betrayed by you know by everybody at this moment but there's a a time you don't see it until chapter 38 or spoke to job out of the storm he said who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge and so what i'm trying to say is that everyone goes through difficult times even job had to go through difficult times jesus had to go through some difficult times but job in this season he trusted in god even though all the situation in his life seemed unfair to him yeah and then then the lord speaks to him through that he speaks to him out of that storm and when we meditate like you know how you mentioned esther when we meditate in the lord meditate in the lord in that silence in that quiet time the lord speaks and we allow him to do that now i want to go to um i want to go to psalm 34 18 so psalm chapter 34 18 it says the lord is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as have a contrite spirit and then if we turn to matthew chapter 5 uh verse 4 it says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and then when we go to proverbs 18 21 it says the tongue can bring death or life those who love to talk will reap the consequences so this kind of reminds me of you know when a person's going through something we could either be like oh you know what who cares just get over it how many times have we heard that somebody passed away and a person tells a friend tells that person or somebody you know what get over it let's go drinking let's go partying It's, it's gonna be okay And then that person gets worse because they're not dealing with with the stress, the grieving process of it. Mm -hmm. Or we can say, you know what, like what we're doing right now, you know, it's hard, but things are going to be okay. There's beauty in in the pain. Yeah. And just knowing that God is by your side, you know, helping you and listening to you, you know. Amen. Yourself. Amen. And in your faith, I think your faith, um, that's like, that's one of the things too that um, I was thinking about, like mm-hmm. sometimes when everything's okay, you know, well, we have a faith and everything, but when we go through things, that's when it gets tested, you know, like, okay, you know, like you have to show right there that who you really trust, you know, mm-hmm. who you really 
are putting your faith. Powerful. In, yeah. That's powerful. Yeah, it, it, it's easy to, <laughs> you're right, it's easy to, to say, hey, I love God, everything's going okay, let's praise him. But right. in the testing time, are we really going to love God? Do we yeah. really love God like we say we do? Amen. I, I, right there with you, girl. Yeah. You know, I'm, I just want to say thank you for coming here to, to Sochi's Finest. Um, I would like to bring you in more um, in the yeah, future. And um, I'm just very blessed by, by this conversation. I feel like it's needed. A lot of women are in a lot of pain right now, either because maybe they, they, they lost their mother on, on you know, and, and on Mother's Day, they couldn't be there yeah. with their mom on Mother's Day. Or maybe it's, it's Christmas time. You know, holidays can be very difficult for a lot of people. Maybe it's Father's Day. Like you lost your, your father and, and on Father's, I mean, not on Father's, but you lost your father. So, yeah. but the the message here is that there's beauty and pain and we can move forward by just you know speaking to god and meditating in all his wonders and whatever he has to say to our to our heart um speaking of, of um you know father's days is coming up in june and um i would like to open this time to, as well to speak about your your father what your dad meant to you and yeah. what legacy did he leave and his vision for for his family and church and God's yeah. people? Most definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, his, his life, uh, his testimony, mm -hmm. it's a big impact in my life. Uh, that's why I think that's why I think he hurt the most when he passed away, I think because he was a man of God, you know, like mm -hmm. he, he, he didn't just read the Bible or preach it, but he lived what, what, what's in the Bible. And that, that, uh, he gave me a, a, a good testimony, not just to me, but like to other people. Uh, he was such a caring person, but, uh, most of all, I think he loved God with all his heart. Yeah. And he, he, I think that's one of the reasons why he loved people. Mm -hmm. Because he loved God so much, and and all he wanted was to share God's love, and that he could forgive, and that and he was always sharing. Uh, we could be at the doctor's office, and he was like, "Hey, God loves you. You know, God has a purpose for your life." And and uh, it was just one of those things. I was like, "Dad, you're at the doctor's <laughs> office." You know, and I was just like, and he's like, "But I remember one time he told me, uh, you know, he said." Um, he told me, Esther, you know, we gotta shine everywhere we go, Ooh, and we gotta we gotta tell people that God loves God loves them, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you're right, Dad, you know. Even if we're at the, <laughs> the doctor's, <laughs> office, you know, we gotta whoever is there, you know, we gotta share God's love. That's our 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 time that we have with those people. Maybe we won't see them again, or maybe we will. But um, the point is, like, we got to share. Yes. And one of the things that I love about my dad, he always shared God's love. And and uh, he he didn't quite, uh, he didn't criticize people. He, uh, he loved them for who they were. And he told them, you know, um, you know that God loves them and God can forgive you for your sins or for not just like you, you know you're gonna be condemned but mm -hmm. that god loves you and god can forgive you and he could make you a new person and it's just an amazing and uh, just you know seeing his life it's just yeah it, it, that's one of the things that i miss the most you know yes. his testimony and and i love um how he loved god first of all like i said and how he loved people but um just you know his his ministry it, it, it wasn't just in church, it was outside church, it was everywhere he went. And I love that you gotta shine everywhere you go, you know? And um, it, I, that's one of the things I wanna remember. Everywhere you go, you gotta shine. And you don't know what the other person is going through, mm -hmm. but uh, that smile that you give them, that uh, opening the door for them, it will make a huge difference on, on someone else's lives, you know? Yes. Yes. And the Christian walk is not always easy. It's hard. So for him yeah. to do that every day and that's like you're 
living a, a sacrificial life. Like you're you're sacrificing what you can do, what you can say. Um, instead of going by the flesh, you go based by love. And I feel like that's what your dad did a lot of the times. It was more important for him to win souls with love. Yes, definitely. And you know, one of the things that I really admire about him too was that even though um, he was uh, he was in dialysis, you know, mm -hmm. and and you know, other people could have said, "Well, you know, I'm in dialysis. I can't go preach anymore," or you know, you know. Mm -hmm. yes. It was like no. Until the end, I'm gonna preach, and and uh, on Sunday, it was a Sunday, the 19th of December of last year. In his last sermon was, you know, Jesus is going to be born, you know, and yes. he's like, we got to get ready, you know, we got to get ready, and and, it, and that was his last sermon, you know, wow. and, it, and he's like, he, he prepared his bulletin on Tuesday, uh, he passed away on Thursday, but he got ready a lot of stuff, and, and he was thinking of his church, and just, you know, uh, at the end of the bulletin, he had a message for them and he said, you know, besides Merry Christmas and all that, he says, you know, that uh, your pastor loves you, you know, and it was just like, uh, I don't know, it's just an incredible feeling that until the end, you mm -hmm. know, giving everything to God, you know, even mm -hmm. though you're going through things, like I said, but uh, just giving everything to God is the most amazing thing, you know. Amen. And your dad, your father definitely had God's love in his heart. I want to yeah. ask you, um, and, and thank you for sharing that because it's not it's not always easy. Not everyone wants to speak about their hurt, what they went through, their pain. And so thank you. I applaud you for even coming on and, and sharing your father with many people today. And um, I wanted to ask you, you're welcome. Um, what is God doing in your life today? Well, you know what? One of the things that I love singing, uh, like like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I love singing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that? You know, it's just one of those things that um, it's in me. It's in me. It's just like uh, my dad was telling me. My mom, when she was pregnant, she used to sing to me before I was born, and mm -hmm. so I think that's why I I love singing. You know, it's one of the <laughs> things. He said she used to um, sing to me and read the Bible, and it, it's just like it's things that I was like, wow, you know. I remember, uh, memory uh, like verses later on because she used to tell me all the time, you know, my mom, and uh, and just singing and praising to God. That's one of the things that um, that when I was going through things, you know how it says in the Bible, you know, when you're going through things, mm -hmm. sing to me, you know, praise. Yes. praise. And that's why he helped me too. He's, it was like my therapy, you know, just singing to God, like, God, I, like, I don't understand, but I'm here, you know, I'm here. I'm, I'm singing this song to you. And and I was singing to my dad when he was at the hospital many times. Um, and I felt discouraged at, at, at points, you know, but he always showed me, you know, the faith that he had. It was so viral that 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 um uh, that i was like i want to have that you know mm -hmm. i want that relationship i want to have that love to god like the way that he has yes. you know and uh and just singing it was one of the things that helped me um and, and just to tell you real fast but um you know uh he went to from the hospital he went to this place um our rehabilitation care center the uh, we're helping people that got a stroke. My dad got a stroke four years ago. Mm. And and on the place, you know what? Um, I volunteered after my dad um, came to the house. I said, I need to learn so I could help my dad. You know, wow. that's, that was just thinking. But God showed me something different. You know, when I, I, I noticed, like, my heart was broken, you know? Yes. Like, I, I see my dad healthy and doing things for God, and all of a sudden, you know, he couldn't talk and, and walk, and he preached, and it was like, it was hard for me, you know, to understand that. Yes. Um, and I remember I said, you know what, I gotta, I'm gonna volunteer, and I'm just gonna try to learn and, and see how can I help my dad, but I noticed that, that my heart was broken, but every time that I went and helped someone else, it was like God was healing my heart, like wow. pieces that 
were broken, he was putting it together. Mm-hmm. And that blew my mind because I was like, wow, you know, it, it, it was a learning experience for me. And, the, the, you know, one of the, God had a purpose. And I didn't see it at first. I was like, why am my dad is going through this, you know? But what I noticed is, you know, they hired me at that place and they say hey you want to work here in activities and activities what is this you know mm-hmm. they're like oh i'm gonna encourage people you do activities oh, with them nice. and i was like i love that <laughs> and, like, and we heard you singing we, we heard you playing guitar and i was like yeah i play guitar and i sing at my church and they're like well why don't you stay and work right here with us and so they hired me oh, and, and uh, i got hired <laughs> And I started working, and the the best thing was they they let me do what I wanted to do with my dad to encourage oh. him, to sing to him, to pray for him. You know, it was just an amazing thing. And and like I said, you know, I didn't understand why my dad had to go through this, but I know that God had a purpose. He wanted me to to share with with them. You know, God's love. You know. Yes. It's like now you're living your legacy through your dad. Right. Yes. That's and amazing. Love, yeah. And I love that. And and I understand now a little bit, you know, that God had a purpose through this pain. You know, I, like I said, I don't know what you're going through, but I know that God has a purpose and you just have to trust in him and just walk by faith, you know, walk by faith. Amen. And uh, just giving everything to God. God, you know my pain. You know what I'm going through. And and uh, but I'm leaving everything to you. Mm. And I think that helps you to release that pain. Amen. It, that you know. Yes, definitely. Thank you for sharing that. And also, um, I know that you you uh, wrote a song. It's in regards to anti-bullying. Share that with us. Yeah. So. Uh, so I got challenged by uh, Dr. Robert Ornelas from the SLG group. He, he asked um, if we could sh- if we could uh, write a song, and they wanted to share with uh, uh, a program in uh, Arizona. Mm-hmm. And they said, "Can you write a song?" So, anyways, I was like, "Okay, let's do this." But I was thinking it's gonna be uh, in some months, you know. But they said, no, we need it in three days. We got to start sharing, you know? And I was like, three days? <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard. But I was like, no, I'm going to pray. So I started praying to God. And, and I was like, God, you know, you know, what we say, what we do, it's, it's going to help or it's going to destroy somebody's life, you know? Mm-hmm. And so my, my vision, it came... Uh, thinking of that and I was thinking of my nephews I said what can I tell them that they have to be careful you know what they say what they do because like I say it's gonna affect someone else's life and so I came out with this song it's called uh, I call it what you say what you do and it's just um I love it let me just share a little bit with you it says what you say what you do you gotta be careful words can lift you up or they could destroy you in a minute so you gotta be careful what you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. Mm-hmm. It's just a lot of people, a lot of people are gonna try to put you down, but you have to remember to never give up, never give up. And you gotta keep on going, right? You gotta keep on going, reach for the stars, reach for your goals and never give up. And and uh, there's one part that I wanna share with you. Um, you know, sometimes there's people that tell you things and they put you labels, you know? Right. And they, they get stuck on you. And once you start to believe in what they're telling you, they make it make it real. You know, it yes. makes it so you have to, you know, kind of say, No, this is not mine. So I put this part right here. It says, I'm sick and tired of people telling me you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Please stop, stop putting me labels like if I'm some type of product. I'm not a product, I'm a creation. Amen. Amen created with a purpose and you know what he has a better plan and a better Ooh, Ooh, powerful so you gotta be careful what you say. <laughs> careful. i like it i i think we need that as adults as well you know it, yeah. it reminds me of proverbs like we know how we were reading earlier that the tongue can bring death or life you know those yeah. who love to talk will reap the consequences now esther if someone wanted to to get a hold of you or reach out you know 
do you mind sharing your your um your pages your you know on facebook yeah most definitely uh, instagram. So on instagram let me start with instagram um they could find me roquera underscore four the number four underscore christ okay. but uh but let me tell you real fast so it's r o k e r a underscore four underscore christ c h r i s t amen what about facebook and facebook is just my name esther escobedo so it's e-s-t-h-e-r and then my last name is e-s-c-o-b-e-d-o okay awesome and then i know that we just had mother's day like on last sunday today's wednesday um um do you want to give your mommy shout out yes most definitely i love my mom um <laughs> and, and and her name is like my name so it's S- <laughs> i love that name that's a beautiful name yeah thank you and uh mm-hmm. and she always um tells me first uh that my name was um because of a missionary but also from the bible uh but she said that there was some uh missionary that was very uh strong and and she believed in god and she's like i, I want to put you that name so that's <laughs> how they got the name but i think you and her name uh and it was from the bible too so uh we love um, esther's story from the bible so that's how they got my name that's a beautiful name yeah a powerful story too if anyone is um you know looks into the book of kings you yeah. know they can find out about the the queen esther it's very beautiful how she saved her people the jewish people yes so um do you mind esther um praying for the ladies out there that are going through a tough time and doing the also the prayer of salvation yes most definitely okay let's pray together Amen. Uh, heavenly father thank you so yes, much Lord. for this day uh, that you have given us god and i want to ask you god to be with us um you know exactly what we're going through god yes. and and you don't know the people that are listening right now god i just want you to to touch their hearts the pains that they're going through god you're the only one that could help them to have peace god in their lives and i want to ask you god to be with them uh let them know that you're here and that we just need to come to you god and ask you to to be with us and to help us in whatever Uh, situation we're going through god just let us know that you're here by our sides and that you love us and that you care about us and that you could forgive us from anything that you that we have committed god i want to ask you to let us just come to you clean god and and uh help us to to grow and and um just to continue walking in you help us to um accept you as the lord and savior that yes lord help us to uh, just to remember that sin um separate separate us from you god help us to to know that you could forgive any sin help us to that that you could make it clean god and we could be new people and that you want to use us god as an instrument i want to ask you god to be in our lives change us please i pray for whoever is going through something god um it could be depression um suicidal thoughts god yes uh, divorce, uh, whatever is in their mind god i just want to ask you to please be with them god listen to their their what they're going through god i just want to ask you to be with them god help them know that you're here and that you could forgive them god we love you we thank you for the changes that you're gonna do in our lives and um just help us to know that you're here and that your presence god your holy spirit god is gonna is is here with us and, and just let them feel that you're here help us and and i want to thank you god for this opportunity that you have given me to share with sister social god please bless her ministry help her what she's going through god too and i know you're gonna do big 
things and you have a big purpose for her life god thank you for everything we love you and and thank you again god for everything for your presence and please touch someone's uh, life yeah. in jesus name i ask you amen 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 that was a beautiful prayer thank you esther that was that was beautiful um I just you're welcome. Do you mind singing or like doing singing like two, you know, like at least a verse or two from your song? Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Like, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> All right. What you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. What you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. Words can lift you up or they could destroy you in a minute. So you gotta be careful. What you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. What you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. I'm sick and tired of people telling me you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Please stop. Stop putting me labels like if I'm some type of product. And I'm not a product, I'm a creation. Created with a purpose and you know what? He has a better plan and a better future for my life. So you gotta be careful. What you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. That could be your brother, that could be your little sister, that could be your uncle, that could be your cousin. So you gotta be careful what you say, what you do, you gotta be careful what you say, what you do, you gotta be careful. You gotta reach for the stars, reach for your goals and never give up. You gotta reach for the stars, reach for your goals and never give up and never give up. All right. Amen. <laughs> I love that. I love it. I love it. Whoa, well, there you go. There you go. No, get up for Christ. Esther Escobedo. There you go. And, you know, please follow her. She's on Facebook, Instagram. And um, I had a really great time speaking to you today, Esther. And thank you so much for sharing with me and also with others, the, the listeners, and um, for being a blessing in my life. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and for having me. It, it, it was a pleasure. And God bless you, sister, okay? God bless you, too. Love you, too. You, 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 you gotta be careful what you say, what you do. You gotta be careful what you say, what you do. You gotta be careful. Words can leave you up or they could destroy you in a minute. So you gotta be careful what you say, what you do. You gotta be careful what you say, what you do. You gotta be careful. A lot of people are gonna try to put you down, but you have to remember, don't give up, don't give up. You gotta keep on going, reach for the stars, reach for your goals, and never give up. You gotta reach for the stars, reach for your goals, and never give up. And don't give up, don't give up.